Totally, I really stink at recording. And then, um, then we would do something with the 2x minus 5 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. And there's a couple of things we could do. I would probably turn it into plus 8 to make a positive 3 minus 8. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you just do minus 3 plus 3? Yeah, you're going to end up the same way. I remember one time I did that, and you were like, but well, why don't you just do it this way? How could you do minus 3 plus 3? Well, minus 3. Well, so the goal would be, like, our goal is hopefully being able to write this as u equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. So then du would be 2x plus 3. And so what we would want to do, so yeah, so minus 3 plus 3 would also work for sure. So if you say I need a plus 3, then I'd also need a minus 3. So you, if, if you do that, what that does is it turns the denominator in, or so if you do u into as that denominator, then du would be 2x plus 3, yes? So, the, so the, your goal is to end up with 2x plus 3 minus something. So if the plus 8 made sense, just do the plus 8. But the how do you decide what to add, your goal is that it's going to be so that the derivative of the top, or that the top is the derivative of the bottom. Except now I don't understand. Wait, but if you add 3 to 5, then you're going to get 2x minus 2. It's negative 5. Yeah. No, no, no. So, no, you Maggie, you're, you're going to come with me and we're going to do plus 8 minus 8. Okay, and so these become a 2x two two plus 3. Yeah, I see that. Uh, then just use that. And then, what would you guys do here? This is the one where you're going to really get mad at me to integrate that. Um, nope, we'll be able to do partial fractions. Uh, oh, yeah, because the, the denominator factors. Yes, you could. So you're going to make this negative 8 over x plus 2 and x plus 1. What would you do if the denominator didn't factor? You'd, you'd probably want to complete the square. Oh, okay, 
so that you could use our tan. So a plus b would equal zero and a plus two b would equal negative eight. Negative b plus negative 2b equals negative 8. Is that right? Yeah, so it's 8 thirds. So I just, I, I'm writing them in the, and a would be negative 8 thirds. I wrote those backwards. But you can see the kind of like the basic premise. This would be one where you'd have to use lots of skills. We feeling okay? That actually worked out really nicely considering you just pulled that out of Yeah, I got lucky. Can you give an example where you have to combine some higher higher lights to come together? Okay, sure. So, um, Let's go ahead and say, and I'm, let's do the integral of 3 over x squared plus 2x minus 3 dx. And so if I'm, like, I can't factor that. So partial fractions comes out of, isn't allowed to happen. So how do we factor it? And so the basic premise is, um, what is the integral of arctangent? You have your sheet. What is it? Is that not factorable? It's not factorable because it's a negative. Oh, <laughs> let's do this. So on your, on your, well, no, arctangent should just be on your blue sheet. Yeah. yeah. One, over a. One over a. Or wait, no, it's the, the other way around. what what integral equals arctan? That's where we are. It's the derivative of arctan. D over a squared plus u squared. D a over a squared plus u squared. Okay, so the intention, it for completing the square, is to somehow turn the denominator into a squared plus u squared. So looking at this, that u needs, so u needs to equal x plus something squared. So the process of completing the square is just looking at these two things. What is the something that would be squared to get me? Plus four. I would need a plus four. And essentially what you do is you say, All right, I have x squared plus 4x. Um, don't worry about the minus 3. We worry about that at the end, okay? x squared plus 4x plus something has to equal x to the same. Th like, we're trying to get it to some an entire function being squared. So what number would go into these two blanks so that I end up with that 4x? Yeah. So essentially to figure out what is that something, you're going to take that middle term and divide by 2. But if these two things are a 2, what's that going to put up here? 4. So I'm going to take my denominator and turn it into x squared plus 4x. If I'm going to do a plus 4, that doesn't equal negative 3. Yeah? So if I added 4, I got to subtract 4 to get negative 7 total. Or so that combined, that becomes... Does that make sense? Yeah. So now I have the integral of 3 and then x plus 2, the quantity squared, minus 70x, which is not going to work for arctangent. <laughs> but the premise is there. Like, that's, what, that's where you might want to complete the square. But it, I should have ended up with a positive, not a negative there. I guess in theory you could, um, I don't know, plus 
it a bunch. Forever? No, not really. I don't think that works. Just, oh, I'm just going to... But, <laughs> but, but the, the premise of completing the square is to turn the denominator into a squared plus u squared to be able to use arctan. We should just, like, pretend that it worked. Yeah. Or if I would have called this a plus 9, then it would work, because then this would be plus 5. I could rewrite the equation. Which is why I gave you the graphs for the questions revolving around even, revolving around this. Did you hear what I said there? Even viewing the graphs doesn't help explain it sometimes of how they do it. So let's go ahead and use the function y equals the square root of x minus three. And we're gonna revolve around let's go ahead and start with the y axis. between x equals the region between x equals 3 to x equals 7. So we're going to take the region bounded by those graphs. Oh, and uh, y, and basically, guys, my intention is first quadrant. Okay, so the very first thing I would do is sketch what does y equals the square root of 3 look like. Is everybody good so far? And uh, if the parts of the graph we're, we're revolving start at x equals 3 to x equals 7. If I wanted to, I could figure out that this is the point 7, let's see, if 7, 2. Oh, yeah. Is that good? And so my boundaries of my function are at 3, 0, and 7, 2. All right. And so from here... What I like to do to kind of think this through a little bit is I'm going to pick an arbitrary point on the graph, okay? So let's go ahead and pick this arbitrary point, okay? And um, I'm going to, when I revolve that function all the way around the graph, it's going to create, or on the y-axis, that's going to create a disk. All right, so... And um, if I, so if I'm doing the disk method and we create that disk, how tall is the disk? Or what's the thickness of the disk? The thickness of the disk is it's going to be a really, really tiny, so it's D something, right? So it would be DY. Masha, are you cool with it? Why it's dy? Yes. Okay. And the minute I say it's a dy, what should my bounds be? Um, zero, to two. zero to two. So there's our disk. All right. And what's the area of a circle? General formula for the area of a circle. Pi r squared. Pi r squared. So I'm going to throw the pi here. I want to square my radius. And how can I describe the radius of this function? In terms of y. Yeah. 
Because it's dy, no. Because if it was revolved around the x, then it's like, you know, your thickness would be the x, but the x is, there's that empty space there. Say that again. <laughs> um, if, because it's rotating around the y-axis, we don't have to worry about that gap. Correct. That's just the, in, that's just the inverse. Right, I was just looking at the minus zero, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, like, there's no gap if you revolve it around x-axis, is there? No, I think, like, yeah. if you're revolving around y equals one, then yeah. But there can also be a, a hole if you have another function to deal with. Yeah, usually that hole happens with a second function. Yeah. It just don't yeah. matter for this one. And to kind of help visualize it, I would do like a different arbitrary point. You can see it's still a whole disk that's going to happen there. But like if I had also done like, let's say my area I was rotating was that same function and the line y equals x plus minus 2 or something like that. And it was this region and then we rotated, that would that would have a hole in it. And then you would do the, the, the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. Is this helping with a uh, disk method? Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing. But this time we're going to use shell method instead. Now, the easiest way to think it through is like for disk method... We're essentially rotating a rectangle around, right? Okay. And the rectangle is perpendicular. For shell method? No, for disk, disk method. The re rectangle is perpendicular to your axis of rotation. For shell method, your rectangle that's getting rotated is um, parallel. parallel. So... It would be like, I'm rotating this entire rectangle. To create this inner and outer shell. Kind of. So. so the volume of that, like think about a soup can label becoming unraveled. Okay, the volume of one of, of that cylinder being unwrapped would be uh, 2 pi rh times thickness. So it's like, um, here's how I would envision doing this, okay? This is a very basic one. But imagine I take these, like, note cards, and I use the ones I have, right? Which are very thin, right? And if I asked you the area of the note card, you would say length times width, but that length is actually 2 pi r. It, is everybody with me? So 2 pi r, h, then the thickness. And what's happening is as I do layers, each layer gets thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm adding in those volumes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm just... So 2 pi r, is, like this isn't outside because that's only for this rectangle. And then if I do this rectangle... 
all of a sudden the outside became the inside. Like if I did a different layer, and I'll try to do this like in a different color. If I then did this one, Okay, it wasn't just the curve. Um, like this one is a rectangle drawn kind of like that. Where the thickness of the disc, which granted is really tiny. Yeah, but um, the, that one's on that side of the curve. This one's on that side of the curve. Is that on purpose? No, it just happens to be what the radius is. The ra the radius is going to be the same for both of these. Okay, it's just when I'm when I'm <laughs> sorry. You're when good. I'm visualizing this like one of them is like shaped like this. And the other one's shaped like this a one will also cylinder, but with a hole. Yeah. So that's on purpose. Okay, sorry. I was just I was I thought we were doing the same exact problem, just with the shell method. We are. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Let me redraw the graph. So what's, so, okay. I, I think I understand your question. Yeah. There is an interior cylinder. Yes. That would need to be included. Then, but wouldn't that interior cylinder just be that? Because we weren't calculating the area under the curve where we revolved around it. We were doing the, the area under uh, the curve. Yeah. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. So, and then we'd add in this shell and then this shell yeah, and then this shell why. I see what you're saying yeah. but you still have a thickness of dx yes, yeah, yeah you, you do. so your thickness is still dx it's like it's gonna it shows up in the I'm gonna throw the 2 pi out front the radius function and the height function is where that would show up So, what is the radius? Uh, x. What is the height? Okay. So if I say, what's the height of this cylinder? It's just the value of the function, square root 3 minus x. The radius... Oh, that's the other. I thought you were putting the other side. The rectangles are vertical there, but the horizontal is the one above. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, was saying, I wasn't saying uh, y squared plus 3. I was saying 1 minus root x minus 3. Because we're doing it on the, the back side. Uh, and it wouldn't be 1 then, would it? Um, yeah, I would have had to put the boundary of y equals 2 up there, but yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. Well, I'm also making a question up on the fly. Yeah. And then what would your bounds be? I think we would run into 
I think it would be zero. Uh, to include these middle ones, we would also have to multiply by no, zero to three with the height being two. So to to do that, it would be two pi, and then from three to seven, x times two minus root x minus three. Yeah. And then plus from pi, zero to three. Yeah, because um, the, the radius is x from 0 to 3, and the height is just 2, because we have an upper boundary of 2. Uh, oh, I would, do, I would just do pi times. I would just honestly calculate that volume in my hand. Wait, pi r squared h is 9 pi times 2 is 18 pi. So the biggest trick with those volumes is like recognizing what is your thickness, a dx or a dy, and then just figuring out your radius and your height. And I promise I do a better job on the test of describing the region that's being rotated. Sorry. Because I'm not making it up on the fly. Um, it wasn't available to you at the time, but WebAssign now is up. And so if you do um, on WebAssign, if you want practice with it, the WebAssign gives you hints as well. If you get a different answer, right, it takes you through how to solve it. So I would highly recommend looking at the WebAssign for 7.2 and 7.3. And they should still, you should still be able to see them all the way. I came out of this more confused than I came out. Cool. I did that to myself, too. So. Wait, so we need a 2 minus root x minus 3. Yeah. I'm going to say negative of this plus 2 just because of spatial reasons, but yeah. No, this would still be from 3 to 7, and then to add in the integral from 0 to 7, what, in that case, you're really just going to do pi r squared h because it's a basic cylinder. You know the height. You know the, the height is from 0 to 2, and then pi r squared. Your radius is going to be 3 the entire time. It's not on a – the radius isn't changing. Your R would be 3. Your H would be 2. Wait. Yeah. Oh, because But, guys, if you're recognizing what's going on, this is literally a cylinder with a radius of 3 and a height of 2. So I would just do pi times 3 squared times 2. But if you write it with integral notation, then you wouldn't use the 3, would you? No, but but when you evaluate the integral, you're going to end up multiplying by 3 anyway. Because, yeah. like, when we think through, that would be pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of 3 times 2, yeah? Right, yeah. Okay, but that is what that is, okay? It's the same thing, yeah. So, so the integral of this would be 6x evaluated from 3 to 0, yes? Yeah. You're going to get the same answer either way. Because if I ask you what is this distance and this distance and this distance. Is that the distance you're asking? Yeah. I thought it was 
Because that would be the height of the cylinder. At the beginning, we were evaluating for a different cylinder. At the beginning, we were evaluating for a disc, not a shell. No, no, I meant on the beginning of the shell. We were evaluating for under the curve, not the other side of the curve. Uh, if it's not 2 minus, I'd be rotating this area. Yeah, well, I thought the rectangles are... You're, you, it, it, the question is, am I doing this rectangle or this rectangle? Yeah. The two, and because of how we set up the picture up top, and to show you guys it's the same, we're doing the red rectangle, which is whose height is 2 minus the function, not... The height of the function. Be a one sixth, or this should be because oh no, no, oh man, oh, I messed up a bunch. Well, let's put it this way if you do x plus a third times x plus minus one, mm -hmm. x times x doesn't give you three x squared. Oh, like you needed to, that one third was three x minus three x plus one. Wait, 3x plus 1? Wait. Oh. Okay.